So today I'm going to talk about Lambda Lists, a functional programming language I've been programming in a PLT scam. So basically, Lambda Lists is a purely functional programming language that does not possess variables, nor does it possess functions. You might think that's a bit odd, considering it's a functional programming language, but it actually works out quite well. In fact, there are only three distinct constructs in Lambda Lists. There's patterns, which basically define just list replacements. There's atoms, which are just values, such as 42. There's scalar types, basically. And then there's lists, which contain values, which are just a collection of value of atoms or lists, or other lists. So I'm going to fire up MT Scam and show you an example. Um, so I load main, and so basically, for example, we could find the pattern, and this basically just defines a pattern that says whenever that tells uh, lambda list whenever we see a list that contains only two elements with a length of basically a length of two, the first one being the literal square, and the second one being any value, that's what the question mark denotes, any value, uh, you just, it's a wildcard basically, replace that with the value we matched times itself. So we say, and then we could do square four, and that gives you four, or square 42, that gives you 1,000, 764. A uh, more complex example, we could say cube. And the cube of a number, right, is just itself times the square. So the cube is itself times the square. And then we could say cube 4. 64, cube 42, 74,888. Uh, note that the square or the cube, that's not the name of the so-called pattern. That's just part of the pattern. So we could have equally defined uh, equally defined that to be, we could say just cube, right? So then we could say 4 cube, 64, 1337 cube, uh, a really big number, like 2 billion million something anyways so you see that there are, they have no names which is pretty nice because we could write whatever we want for example to show off a more co a more complex example would be let we'll define the factorial function in fact it goes to if a is less than 1 then we turn 1 else a times the factorial of a minus 1. And you can obviously see, see that this is a tail recursive and this is how you would write a real factorial function, but we could see fac of 4, 24. Fac of 42. Takes a while. Fac of 1337. That might have been too big. Yeah, that was too big. Okay. So, still work. Anyways. So, we see... Uh, yeah. So, that's the factorial function. and it, Or pattern. Just a pattern. And the syntax in the language for if is... Uh, just if, condition, then this, else that. But let's say we want to make it more readable. We can do anything. Remember, this is just patterns. We could define my if to be the condition. We can say cond. So my if, then that, else. And we could say that just goes to if cond a b. Right? Everything's possible. So we can say my if 4 is greater than 3. Uh, then we return hello, else we return, then hello, else goodbye, 
and we see that it returns goodbye because 4 is 9, less than 3. And note that using patterns allows us to use infix notation, postfix, and prefix notation. Whatever we want to do, we can do it. This is the first language that I'm aware of that allows this type of power and this type of uh, flexibility. And that's why I think it's truly revolutionary. Uh, so, what else can I show you? Oh yes, there, though there are no variables per se, uh, you can emul emulate variables with functions. We just say let the answer to life, and then we, that goes to the ID of 42. Note that we couldn't have just put 42 or 42 because we don't want to return 42 with the only with one element with a list of containing one element with that at element being 42 and we couldn't have done this because patterns are strictly list replacements there are no such you'd only replace lists with other lists you can't replace atoms with lists or lists with atoms so that's why we have to, we have to do ID which is basically just the identity so the identity of 42 which is 42 right and then we could say the answer to life is 42 and we could use that let's say uh, the answer to and then we could say let's say let the number of horns on a unit unicorn and we could make that go to the ID of one and then we could do arithmetic the since these are just patterns plus forty three so this is a lot so the patterns basically just allow for so much flexibility it's truly amazing and uh yeah that's that's lambda lists